Right, London Town. Next one's out to all the crew that loves it. I'll tuck the main shell. You know you like the next one. Out to all the rest of the crew that love the next one. Get on the case. 0961 749 867 London Town. What are you waiting for? Christmas is finished, so you can't be waiting for that. If you're waiting for the next one, you've got a long wait. Early to mid 90s, the UK underground scene would be buzzing off the dark sounds and deep bass lines of jungle drum and bass. In South London, the established venue known as the Ministry of Sound would be ending its night with the last tune being played. Party heads would have needed to find another venue that would continue to play the music and keep up the vibes ongoing. Down the road from the Ministry was a small pub and venue called the Elephant and Castle, which hosted an event called Happy Days on a Sunday. Within the venue, resident DJ Matt Jamlamont will be playing house records with the tempo increased. Little did we know of how much of an impact this little venue created, a genre, a genre that will grow and impact the UK's music culture. This is the sound of UK Garage. But let's take it back in time. During the mid-80s across the Atlantic in New York City King Street was a venue called Paradise Garage. This venue was considered at the time to have the best sound system within the city. A resident DJ and New York legend Larry Levan played New York styled house records also known as Garage which was a style of house that focused more on gospel riffs, disco, R&B vocals and grooving bass lines. Paradise Garage was always thriving, being such a big part in New York's culture and house music, a place also known as Saturday Mass. Unfortunately, in 1987 the venue was closed down and now has become a past icon. But little did we know of how much of an impact their scene would influence the UK's underground sound. I was here and I'll never forget it, it changed my life. It was a place where people had to go to get their frustrations out and when you left that place you felt like you were in paradise. People who cared about you, people that you didn't even know. My uh, sanctuary. Freedom. That's what it meant to me. It meant freedom. To be who you wanted to be, to do what you wanted to do, the way you wanted to do it. House coming from the US was such a major influence in the UK music scene. First coming into fruition during the 80s and its exposure within the UK acid house scene, played by such resident Clink Street DJs, Eddie Richards, Kid Bachelor, and Mr. C. During the late 80s, soul music in the UK started to become more prominent on the charts. of these two styles of soul and dance would give us more of the soulful R&B vibes within house music. Oh, 
During the same time, back in the US in the early 90s, a house and garage producer named Todd Edwards would be experimenting with the house records, putting them on a remix. With his sound, experimentations allowed the creation of that unique hi-hat shuffle sounds. In London, the Happy Days event at the Elephant and Castle pub was considered as an after party for the Ministry of Sound Goes. They were usually playing a lot of US house and New York garage music. As we know, the DJs would have needed to increase the tempo to ensure and maintain the positive vibes in order for the ravers to continue throughout the night till day. Sundays were lacking in music events. Other establishments started to pop up during Sundays creating iconic venues such as the Gas Club and the Arches up in Charing Cross playing US House and Garage. DJs started to get the dub mixes of the house tracks. Dubs from MK, Masters at Work, Todd Edwards and many many more without the vocals. And with that, we're able to sample it, creating its own unique style. By having the dub mixes of house tracks, it allowed more opportunity for producers to experiment and add their own touch to the tracks, especially putting on a fat bass line. These new tracks start to get released onto big old school labels such as Nice and Ripe, Swing City Records and many many more. During the time when UK Garage was still on the ground, Garage created a raver community not many people knew about and could have been considered somewhat like a secret club as it was truly about the music. The Gas Club hosted an event playing US house and garage known as the Spread Love Project, hosted by DJ Dominic Spread Love, Norris the Boss and Genesis Wayne. One day, one of the ravers who was a regular at the Gas Club decided to pick up the mic alongside Dominic, and with that was able to create a reaction with the crowd. His name was MC Creed, aka The Godfather. Rooted from the junglist scene, British MC culture was vital. The junglist scene incorporated the Jamaican influences of toasting, the rhyming over rhythms and amping up the crowds. This jungle influence would later become an important part within UK garage culture. However, the quick exposure of UK Underground Garage would not have happened significantly as it did without the help of the Pirate Radio stations. As we know, Pirate Radio had been such a big player within the UK Underground scene. Taking it back to the Acid House and Jungle Drum Bass stations, the support from record stores, which the same also played a crucial role within UK Garage. Transmitters were set up on the council block rooftops, emerging new pirate radio stations such as London Underground, Flex FM and Freak FM, and many many more, promoting the sounds of UK Garage. If your record was to be power played by the pirate DJs, your record will be selling at the record stores. This also resulted in the similar issues had by previous jungle and drum and bass stations. As running an unlicensed radio station is illegal, the runners of the pirate radios would have to constantly change locations in order to bypass Ofcom and police. Furthermore, rival radio stations would try and be the champion radio within the area and therefore sabotage any rival transmitters. This resulted into all-out heated clashes and threats which at the times was dangerous, all due to interferences on the frequencies. Five, six, one, eight, three, five, zero. <laughs> During the 90s, house music was becoming mainstream within the UK music charts, and by the mid 90s, commercial clubs would enforce this type of music to be played. The UK had our own house artists in the scene, creating classics such as the Scottish house group Nightcrawlers. At the 
same time within the UK on the ground, UK garage started to become more known, creating the realization this was the new British sound. DJ's record boxes would have had a load of British produced tracks from the likes of Booker T, Grant Nelson, Jeremy Sylvester, and many, many more. The hosting of garage events was still considered within the Sunday scene, but the buzz of that was going on, more garage events were starting to pop up besides on the standard Sundays. Alongside jungle drum and bass raves, which was usually in the main dance rooms one, room twos would have had the DJs play UK Garage. Furthermore, garage events were now being introduced at legendary venues such as the Club Coliseum hosted by Martin Lana for his Liberty Nights, The End hosting that Twice As Nice, Bagley's Warehouse and many, many more. The popularity of UK Garage is growing, and club owners started clocking on. As we know, Garage was a Sunday scene, and were not able to have events on Fridays or Saturdays. But when club owners noticed its potential and its profitability, it allowed the Garage promoters to have Friday and Saturday nights to be fully rammed. Even the Sun City events, they managed to have a mad turnout during New Year's Eve, being the biggest Garage event at the time. Major legal radio stations couldn't ignore what was going on in the UK scene. KISS FM, one of the UK's top radio stations, were playing UK Garage and was put into the forefront by DJ Steve Jackson, taking the risk of playing the tracks to the masses, doing interviews and so forth. Without Jackson, we wouldn't believe UK Garage would have had spread as quickly as it did. By 1997, a UK Garage track finally reached the top 40 of the UK charts. <laughs> 1997 will be the year demonstrating the impact of UK Garage and its potential to the masses. UK Garage was evolving, the sounds were becoming more predominant and was starting to get media attention. During UK Garage's evolution, more jungle and drummer bass producers started to jump in on the hype. Previously, the increased upbeat tempo of the UK Garage was usually associated with the term Speed Garage. However, as we know, drum and bass producers incorporate a formulated two-step beat to their DMB tracks. Therefore, this influence will be put into UK Garage as well, pointing in the style of two-step garage. The fashion styles of the nights were very unique. Within UK Garage, hoodies, caps and dirty trainers would have had bounces not allowing you to get into the events. The ravers were now making an effort. It was all about the suits, loafers, and champagne bottles or brandy. Serious, we're talking about Moschino, Versace, and Gucci brands being worn. The lads were looking slick, and the ladies were looking stunning. By 1998, producers such as Tough Jam, Dream Team, MJ Cole were creating tracks entering the UK charts. But UK Garage was not only stuck here in Britain, it was also going across holiday clubbing destinations such as Aya Napa in Cyprus becoming big, in competition with Ibiza. Ibiza was focused on the house scene and did not cater much for UK urban music at the time. Aya Napa wasn't always as popular. It was a small fishing village with a few restaurants and bars. However, it was until Nick Power took over the iconic cool club focusing on US Garage in the mid 90s. But by 98, DJs would bring this to the ever growing UK sound to the holiday clubbers. With DJ S's connections from London, he was able to bring artists and DJs such as DJ Spoonie from the Dream Team and MC Creed for their first Pure Silk event, attracting to almost 1,000 people. Evidently, was a success. 
and therefore would later result into more rammed events, creating Ayanapa the iconic destination for UK Garage for the upcoming five years. It's the way. Ayanapa's economic growth during the late 90s went up due to the increase in tourism from the UK garage scene. Local, ethical and land development improved. UK garage was running Ayanapa, creating divides and clashing with opposing clubs. The connections and family within Napa's scene was evident. George, such a boy George, when we run in late for the airplane, the my man pulled and actually made the airplane wait for us. That's how much we had Iron Napa locked them times. Yeah. Remember, like, it was a different level of thing there, man. Iron Napa was iconic, creating a culture, a sense of escape and unity, which many wish they can go back and experience again. Success. With the rising awareness of the scene, the new two-step sound and with a new wave of crowds getting involved, it was just a matter of time that the scene was going to be commercial. By 1999, British producers started getting more of the contemporary R&B tracks coming from the US and remixing them with UK garage sounds. With that, our MC's contribution gave us more MC-led legendary tracks, such as the iconic DJ Luck and MC Neat, A Little Bit of Luck, peaking at number 9 in the UK charts. By the new millennium, it will become more regular that UK garage tracks would become more common. The Awful Dodgers album, It's All About The Stragglers, had five top tens in the UK charts, demonstrating the success of UK garage. And with that, introduced a new artist coming in from the garage scene, and in result, will become a big name in the music industry, Craig David. Furthermore, other garage producers such as True Steppers was bringing in pop stars into the sound, such as Victoria Beckham having a positive response from the commercial public and many many more pop type styles started to emerge
again I'm just in a tree, now i in a trend This time I thought I'm bigger than my friends Mega Romeo, just one of that stem At the same time, the UK garage sound was changing and becoming more MC-led and lyrically focused with artists such as Oxide and Neutrino, Miss Dynamite, and one group of artists in particular, a group that made a huge impact in the UK garage and urban scene, was South London's So Solid Crew. Originally, a 90 member group consisting of Mega Man, Asher D, Harvey, and many, many more, becoming an iconic group representing the urban scene. This group shaped the future of UK Garage. The impact of So Solid Crew allowed for the group to win awards. Furthermore, can be spoken on this group and its importance but we won't fully focus on it in detail here. That will be for another episode. However, it is important to keep in mind that this group was an influence in the development of our UK sound. As UKG was becoming darker and MC focused, the lyrics used by MC started to get a mass attention. This included the media, as they believed it glamorized violence. Not only that, because of the new generation coming in, it caused tension with other old school garage players of the scene. They weren't liking the new style being introduced. DJs were banning certain tracks being played and not only that, raves started to become dangerous with club shootings occurring at garage events and because of this, it shut down all garage events. All the clubs that they were working at were told you can't have anything, you can't have any UK garage people in your club. In the end what they've done, they've banned garage raves from all the clubs like in London definitely you could not get a club. If you told them you were going to put on a garage night, no way. With the negative press and violence coming out of the UK garage raves, it was thought at the time that garage would stay a London thing, eventually die out. Up in the Midlands, another style was emerging. As we know during the 90s, the UK garage beginnings were always four to the floor style beats, also known as speed garage due to the increase in upbeat tempo. But there was one venue in particular that contributed to this. One of the North's greatest impacts on the UK underground music scene. In the back streets within the city of Sheffield was Niche Nightclub. Opened in 1992, this nightclub originally played the underground house and UK garage. By the new millennium, DJs of the nightclub started to fuse together the speed garage, R&B, the 4x4 element, and their unique sound of bass lines. This club venue had an atmosphere and community like no other within the city at the time. One of the resident DJs there was Jamie Duggan, a legend within the baseline scene, being one of the pioneers of the sound. Before the term 4x4 and baseline, the sound was called niche music as it originally started from there and eventually its popularity grew. The baseline sound was spreading all over North and with that, a growth of baseline events started to emerge such as in Leeds, Manchester, Birmingham and many, many more. A 
Another venue that was important in the scene was in Dewsbury. This small town in Yorkshire hosted the second big baseline nights, the club called Sheridan's. Clubs like these gave the North opportunity for new upcoming producers the chance to get heard, giving us big baseline names such as DJQ, TS7 and many many more. Baseline started to become the sound of the North. By the mid 2000s, Baseline finally had its first tune to become commercial, gaining national success. <laughs> I'm heartbroken without your love. T2 Heartbroken reached number two in the UK charts, demonstrating the success Baseline was within the UK mainstream. And many more followed, breaking into the top 40 UK charts. Unfortunately, the original niche nightclub was closed down by authorities after following a 300-man police raid at the club. And the same happened with the closure of Sheridan's nightclub due to the negative association with gangs, drugs, violence and gun shootings that authorities state was attracted within baseline nightclubs. Which overall has been so unfortunate. Many people would have had amazing experiences, many friends being made and memories treasured within these venues. And with that, by the upcoming years and the decrease in popularity with the scene, it was believed 4x4 and Baseline would be dying out. So how's both UK Garage and Baseline inspired future generations? UK Garage and Baseline has been on a rise. Big name artists have brought it back into the masses. <laughs> UK Garage and Baseline is still very much alive, not only within the mainstream, but yet is essential as it is now within UK raves and festivals. Hello, Ohio! Oi, what a day we got in store! When they say you say we say they say me, stop! It's when they say you say we say they say me, stop! It's when they say we say they say me, stop! It's when they say we say they say me, The fusion of UK Garage and Baseline has now evolved. 
with the fusion of sounds has thus created a UK bass. Besides the style of house, you can still hear the elements of both bassline and UK garage within them. And this is starting to get attention from around the world, such as Russia, Europe, and the US. Music channels such as Opium, UKF, Deepro, and many, many more have given the opportunity for talented artists and producers to be heard from the underground and very much keeping UK garage and bassline alive. This gave us talented artists such as Skepsis, Man Yu Leng, TQD, and many, many, many more. Furthermore, other subgenres have been rooted from the scene. At a moment, UK funky house emerged fusing garage and Afrobeat vibes, becoming big back in the day. That scene gave us big funky house producers such as Crazy Cousins, Roska, Champion and many more. Fusing UK funky and bass which is still going on till this day. Trust me, sounding nice! Outside Champion! Roska Production! Even within television. The mockumentary People Just Do Nothing portrays a group of people running a pirate radio called Corrupt the Femme demonstrating the antics they have to go through when running an illegal UK garage broadcast station. Hold tight the phone line crew inside, yeah? Phone line number to get you through once again is 07050 030 108.9. Why are Corrupt FM so big in the area? That's because we're killing it. Exactly. And if you kill it, you get the respect of others. Based on the real-life documentary on the South End Essex radio station. Well, true. Who the bumba put that picture up in the... It's a last light. This just demonstrates the popularity of UK Garage and its impact on UK culture and how a programme like this gave them the success in winning a BAFTA award and national success. It literally came from nothing on YouTube, we were just a group of mates uh, just mucking around with each other. I can't swear. And even with the new bass hype, there is another genre, more focused with the relaxing factor, fusing the UK garage sound called Future Garage. Overall, we cannot forget where UK garage began. Big names from the scene such as Matt Jam, Lamont, Todd Edwards, DJ EZ and many many more rooted from the original UK Garage era and are still playing big events till this day.
furthermore, we need to remember the legendary MCs rooted at the beginning of UK Garage. MCs who have been vital within the UK underground rave culture and thus left a big impact in the scene such as MC Creed, MC Charlie Brown and many many more. All of them. Everyone involved in the UK garage and the baseline scene have inspired and influenced a new generation of MCs, DJs and producers onto the scene. Bearing in mind, the old school ravers of the time would believe that the late 90s was the best time for UK garage. Before the new dark sounds that got involved, before the gang violence that came in, DJs, Producers and ravers of the time would have been at these events like no other. The new friends, the fashion styles, the love, the unity, the relationships made and the memories from then that will be treasured for a lifetime. And without them, from the efforts of the UK Garage Pirate radio stations, the events, the MCs and the producers, our UK sound wouldn't be where it is today. Next time on that UK sound, after the new millennium, the sounds of UK Garage were now changing, forming into different set paths. Down in South London, in Croydon was emerging a new sound, becoming a new darker form of Garage and taking influences from Jamaican dub. Little did we know of the impact this sound would have, not only nationally within the UK, but becoming big worldwide. This is the sound of dubstep. Zambuca. I don't like states, don't get bookers, that's disgusting. Well, I saw you girl, I'm across the room. You had your eyes on me, I have my eyes on you. We went to the bar, for a Zambuca. You gave me your number, and you took my number. Well, I saw you girl, I'm across the room. You had your eyes on me, I have my eyes on you. We went to the bar, for a Zambuca. 
girl You gave me your number And you took my number Live on a roll, vapor and corrupt FM, you know. Man, the moment, the moment, the moment, the moment, the digging, 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 the
Men I like talking Woo! Step up, men have a sky larking Woo! Boss up the ting for money right. Me have girl for money, I'm marking Set up the ting, no warning Big money ting, we are calling No, we are artists But Wally Papa, I want tarnish Boss up the ting, man, know me I be heading OT If it ain't money, don't phone me I be getting busy, get my lonely This shit could like ice in a freezer If I need links, I'll holler at Freaker Low to the soul like Nina I smoke weed from me, I smoke weed oh, 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 oh.